I'm Hannah Bernard. You're watching Market One Minute. Today we are here with Lee Buckler of Replicel Life Sciences. Now, Lee, we've chatted in the past, and based on timelines of the company, you're expected to have some pretty significant milestones at the end of this year for 2016. Are you still on track for those? The short answer is yes. We said we were going to have data by the end of 2016, and we will have data by the end of 2016. It's locked in. Um, and we're very excited about the potential to see that. We had to make some tough decisions to make that happen. Mm -hmm. We're very committed to it, and we're very excited about um, what that represents as a precursor to licensing, business development, and financing. So go into a bit more detail. Why is it a good time to be investing in Replicel? Well, I think it's an interesting company. We've spent the last three years diversifying our product portfolio, but that means also the flip side is we haven't created data since 2012. We're now on the brink of data from two clinical trials, in chronic tendon injury and dermatology. We're 12 months, six months away from that data, 12 months away from a medical device that will be market ready and in the hands of a licensing partner. Um, and we expect one of those assets to lead to our second major international partnership. So it's a very exciting time with very near term milestones. And just continuing on with that, why should Replicel stand out as a biotech investment opportunity in Canada? Well, I think what's interesting is we're a, you know, a small R&D company based in Vancouver, Canada. Um, and with about $17 million raised, we have three biologic products in clinical development. What we believe is a very promising next generation dermal injector device uh, that we're very excited to launch. And we have this very exciting um, international partnership with one of the largest cosmetic companies in the world. And we're not playing with mice or petri dishes. We're actually treating people in clinical trials and we have clinical data um, expected to come. So let's talk about the future. What does the next 18 months look like for Replicel? So uh, we've got clinical data from our chronic tendon injury trial um, coming up at the end of the year. Clinical data from our anti-aging dermatology product. This is meant to address um, aging and sun-damaged skin. Uh, we have uh, the prototypes being built, tested and validated of our next generation dermal injector device. This is a device that's really being optimally designed to deliver any kind of dermal product that you want to inject through the skin. And then we would expect that one of those assets uh, that we crossed through, through that major milestone would result in our second major international licensing deal. Now leading in from all this exciting things coming for in the next 18 months, when can investors expect to see revenues posted? What's exciting, I think, is we're in this transition between being an early stage biotech company and um, uh, doing early stage clinical trials and yet have two products that have, could potentially be on the market by 2018. So the deal that we have with Shiseido uh, has the potential, that product, the androgenic alopecia pattern baldness product, uh, has the potential to be on the market in Japan as early as 2018, posting sales royalties revenues for us. Uh, which is very exciting in and of itself and very exciting for our partnership with Shiseido. But also um, the dermal injector device, which we believe represents a, a, a really cutting edge way of, of, of improving the way you uh, inject products into the skin, has the potential to be market ready as early as late 2017. Now as an R&D company, how does Replicel anticipate being able to finance future development of its products? Of course, as a pre-revenue company, we're always, you know, have the option of selling equity to raise money. But what we're very very committed to doing is licensing strategic assets and strategic markets to make sure that we can take advantage of the opportunity to bring in non-dilutive capital from the deals and the sales royalties around those products so that we can use that to develop and contribute to the pipeline development as well. Sounds like a lot of exciting news for investors to look forward to. Lee, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Anna.